Number four, they actually get paid to show up. They get paid a per diem. That means daily rate. And it's it's very nominal. It's something like 50 bucks, 75 bucks. They also get paid to reimburse their travel and expenses if they have to travel or if they have to stay overnight for a two day meeting or if they have lunch brought in, anything like that. And it is paid out of the general fund. All right, the general fund. Let me do this. That really didn't help me any. All right, so there are actually two bank accounts that we will deal with. Little side note to help you out. There is this thing called the state general fund. And there is a second bank account called the real estate recovery fund. If you have a question on your exam and you don't know which bank account we use, 90% of your answers are going to be here. All right. The other is going to be here. Another way of looking at this, the state general fund deals mainly with us. The recovery fund deals mainly with clients. So if it's our money, then we're talking about the state general fund. If it's money paid back to a client, that would be the recovery fund. That's the easy way to remember those, all right? Both of these are controlled by us. And when I say us, I mean the real estate commission. They are kept by the treasurer of the state. So we keep them in the state funds, even though we control the bank book, all right? We don't have our own bank account, so to speak. It just goes into the general fund of the state or it goes into the recovery fund. And those are controlled by the treasurer of the state of Indiana. So they get paid out of the state general fund. Now there are some powers that the commission has, and I wanna talk a little bit about what they can actually do. They can administer, enforce the provisions of this article. What word is missing in those two? They can administer the law, they can enforce the law, but what word is missing? So this is a little more fun game if we're sitting up where we can all just start yelling stuff out. It's a little harder here. Sarah, what word is missing in there? Uh, write the law? That would be administer. They do write the law. Okay. It is a word that very seldom people get anyway. They don't police the law. There is no police of this laws. This is the problem. You guys want to know who the police is? Normally, I would tell you to look to your left and look to your right, but that won't do us any good. Look on the screen. That's who the police are. We are a self-policing profession. If somebody's doing something wrong, it is up to us to turn them into the commission and go, hey, I think Raymond's doing this wrong. Then they will enforce it, but they don't have people that come into our office and go, hey, I wanna see seven of your last deals. There is no policing entity for that, okay? I don't need that. that may work. So there is no policing entity. Now, they do police and audit your continuing ed and earnest money accounts, but they are not gonna walk in and go, let me see to make sure that you are not violating any marketing laws. You have to turn someone in for that. They can adopt, prescribe the applications, the documents, so they, they've created all the documents. 
Number three, they are the only people in the state that can do anything with your license. They issue them, they can deny it, they can suspend it, they can revoke it, but they are the only licensing entity in the state. That is a definite strong hint for you to remember because I have heard like the Board of Realtors, they are not licensing. They are just a union. Think about that. The plumbers union doesn't give the plumbers a license. They have to go to school and get a license. That So our license is given to us by the commission and they are the only ones that can do it. All of the other boards are just unions and deal with issues while you're at work. Number four says they can investigate complaints. This is what I was just telling you. If you complain, they will investigate it. If you make a formal complaint, and then they will determine if there's any action necessary. They can bring lawsuits against a client in the name of the state. They can bring lawsuits against the name of an agent in the state. They can inspect your records if they come in, if there's a complaint and someone comes into my office and said, hey, there's been a complaint against you, we are here to inspect your records, they will do that. But they won't just randomly walk in like police just randomly patrol the street because that's all really police do. They patrol, they think there's a possible violation, they take you in front of the judge, the judge says you're guilty, not the cop. Same thing here. They have public hearings. You guys can go to the public hearings. They're open every time they have one. They got to adopt the seal called the Indiana Real Estate Commission. They can utilize anybody necessary to enforce these articles. I have seen prosecutors used. I have seen private detectives hired. The attorney general is the one most common one. They can enter into contracts. They maintain all the records. They deny, grant, revoke are the exams that you're going to take. They have a surety bond. They adopted the rules for the investigative fund. That's to come out and look at your earnest money or your CE. They adopt emergency rules for use path. That's not really a big one. I've never seen that ever even talked about. They have any special powers that they can confer and they adopt the education. So those are all the powers that they have. I would think that when they listed these powers that they probably put them numerically of importance to you. So, you know, try and remember the top five or six, I would say. The, the commission shall adopt the rules of competent practice. We are going to talk about these. There are rules that show you how to practice competently. They have adopted or created a uh, state fund, number 7A, this is what we were talking about. All of the funds that get collected get deposited into the state general fund. When you buy your license, that $60, that money will go into the state general fund. It will be earmarked as real estate commission money, but it will go into the state's general fund. All right. No other person can impose fees or charges against your license because they are the only licensing agency. All right, so that pretty much covers a lot of what the agency does. Now, they have also made some rules about what requires a license? And we talked about this. Here's the law that states it. If you buy, sell, trade, lease, exchange, manage, list, rent, console, or refer real estate, 
you have to have a license. All right. Except these 11 people. The first one is an attorney practicing law. If there is an attorney practicing law, he can actually practice real estate because real estate is a legal subprofession. Any performance by a public official, like the sheriff's sale, the sheriff's sale does not have a real estate license. Number three is anybody that is appointed by the court. So a receiver, an executor, uh, an administrator, a trustee, a guardian of a minor, any of those people that are appointed by the court can also sell. Rentals for less than 30 days. Have you guys seen those extended stay hotels? You know why you can stay for only 30 days? Because if you stayed longer than 30 days, that person behind the counter would have to have a license. Now, you can stay longer than 30 days, but you cannot sign a lease for longer than 30 days. So at the beginning of each month, you would go down, sign another 30-day lease, stay the whole month, go back to the beginning and sign another 30-day lease. If you signed a six-month lease from the onset, that is a license required activity. Um, let me move these so I can see what we're talking about. Rent, uh, number five, the rental of apartments owned by an individual or supervised by a licensed broker. You guys have uh, ever heard of, uh, is it Dorf downtown, Dorfman property management? Um, they actually have a license. A person that is employed by them can do what they do because they are employed by a licensed professional. I feel like I'm not doing a very good job. Are you guys doing okay? It is, it is, this is a lot. So what this is saying is, if a person has a license, like a property manager, and a person, and then there's a person underneath them that is employed, that's the key. It is employed. They cannot be a subcontractor. They cannot work, you know, independently. They actually have to be an employee of the property management group. Cameron? So this would be like, uh, like the maintenance person or something for the yes. property manager? Yeah, if the maintenance person was employed by a property manager, he could potentially show that property because he is supervised and employed by a licensed person. Okay. Uh, what's the one downtown? Van Roy. Carl Van Roy. That's a good example. That's a downtown one. Um, he is a licensed agent or broker, and his employees could show a property. Now. I want to jump to, what was that, number five? I call that the Van Roy rule. Look at number eight. Number eight, acts performed by a full-time salaried employee of the owner of the property. I call this the Simon rule. Those guys that lease out the mall are also not uh, licensed but they are employed by the owner of the mall, Simon. So these, so number five and number eight are very similar, but understand there's a slight difference. Carl manages property for other people and he can do that because he's licensed. So someone working underneath of him can do it as well. Number eight, the people that actually work for the owner of the building, Simon, don't have to be licensed either. So if you owned a rental and you had a full-time employee working for you, they in fact wouldn't need a license either because they would be working for the owner of the building. 
So five and eight are very similar. Six, license, if it's referred by another state, you can pay them a referral as long as they are licensed in that state. So this is the referral business when someone comes up from Florida and an agent calls you and says, I'm sending you my client and you can pay them a referral fee without an, and they wouldn't have an Indiana license because they are licensed in their state. Number seven, anything performed by a person that owns the property. This is that for sale by owner. Remember, disposition is one of your rights. So therefore, if it's your property, you don't need a license. You wanna rent your own property out, you don't need a license. You wanna sell it, you wanna buy for yourself, you wanna do a 1031 exchange on it, all of that. Because disposition's one of your rights. Number nine, a licensed auctioneer can sell real estate at auction without a license. He would have an auctioneer's license. Just like you, he could not broker the real estate without a brokerage license. He could auction it just like you. You can broker it, but you can't auction the property because you don't have an auctioneer's license. I see a lot of auctioneers now getting their license so that before the auction, they'll try and broker it. And if it doesn't work, when they go to the auction, they will sell it at the auction. 